the statement, the check is in the mail? Are you all waiting for Santa's Christmas gift through the mail? Do you think you will get some bonuses in the mail this year? Well, that's a very good question. But behind the scenes, who is driving this whole mail? So tonight, we have the very people who can answer any and all of your questions regarding the mail. We have two people from the United States Post Office. We have Jennifer Chang and Jim Wigdell. And my goodness, the kind of information you will get from these two people, it is incredible. First, let's start with some statistics. Both of them work in the San Francisco Postal District. The Postal District of San Francisco covers 13,000 square miles. It serves over 39 million customers a day at 240 post offices. It employs 7,800 people and delivers 2.3 billion pieces of mail a year to 1.2 million customers. Needless to say, a very large task. Now, before tonight, I didn't know about that either. So anyway, Jim and Jennifer, welcome. I am glad you guys are here. So, thank you. we've been reading about the post office lately. From the retirement of the postmaster to what are now questions about the finances, the financial challenges of the post office. So, Jim, let's start with you. What is going on with the Postal Service? Well, the Postal Service is going through a lot of changes at the present moment. Um, our, our financial condition, of course, is, is no secret. Uh, we lost $8.5 billion last year, which okay. is, you know, our mail volume is declining in rapid decline. and has wow. been declining for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with the economy. It has to do okay. with transference of mail to the Internet. More right. people are paying their bills online, for right. example. So we're making some adjustments to the Postal Service to um, to kind of counterbalance some of the things that are going on. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of people, did, did people know that, here's one little piece of trivia, trivia for you. In 1775, the first postmaster was actually Benjamin Franklin. Yes, he was. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. And the Postal Service has evolved and modernized and in direct competition from the internet and from the different corporations trying to switch their uh, customers online, uh, we see a lot of changes financially, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we understand that uh, there has been quite a drop in mail pieces in, from 2006 to 2008. Could you tell us about that? Sure. In uh, 2006, we actually hit our peak. Up until then, we were growing, and there was more mail in the system. We hit our peak about 213 billion pieces. Wow. And then just last year, just four years later, um, we dropped down to about 170 billion pieces for the year, a loss of about 43 billion pieces of mail. So you know, it's just a lot of the mail volume is declining, and again, mostly due to the uh, economy right, and right. also transference to the internet. Well, tell us, there are 700,000 employees? Um, there was 700,000 employees just a few years ago. Uh -huh. And now we're uh, at about 573,000 people. We've dropped about 100,000 over the last few years, all without any layoffs, I might add. Congratulations. So everything is by attrition. Right. Right, much right. through attrition and not through any kind of layoffs because we don't uh, have that... Yeah, just pretty much through attrition. Okay, so the post office lost, what, $8.5 billion? Last yes. year. Last year. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about what was causing this? There is the um, act, the uh, U.S. Postal Enhancement Act, right. uh, which impacts the post office. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Yeah, in 2006, we went to, we, um, the postal law came into being, the Postal Enhancement Accountability Act, and part of that act 
says that we have to pay $5.4 billion a year into right. our reply employee retirement health fund. Right. And we're, incidentally, we're the only government agency that has to do that. So that has, that's part of that $8.5 billion that, uh, that we were down last year. Right. On top of that, we had an interest payment with uh, workman's compensation for about $2.5 billion. Right. So when you put that together, it's about $8 billion altogether. So in actuality, our bottom line loss, other than those two large ticket items, was about half a billion dollars, right. which is still quite substantial. But not as bad as eight point five billion dollars. Right. So, but 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 you're self-perpetuating though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you generate your own revenue. So, in other words, you don't rely Self on the federal government. Exactly. Correct. So um, that is good. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's that's something that we should really make clear because that's a really big misnomer out there. A lot of people think that we're taxpayer supported, right. but we're actually we're supported by the sale of our stamps and our products right. and our services and. Uh, some stuff that Jennifer will be talking about later, priority mail, right. that sort of thing. Oh, okay. So well, one, little, really one little bit of yeah. trivia I heard from, from Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are run by a board of governors Correct. that are appointed by the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. Correct. So before that, uh, uh, the, the Postal Service is part of the President's cabinet, no mm -hmm. longer, right? right? That mm -hmm. changed. Okay, so... Um, well, a little bit more on that. It's kind of interesting. Up until 1971, Right. The Postmaster General actually was a cabinet member and was like 11th okay. in line to the presidency. Wow! <laughs> so, um, How about that? That was his good information, huh? <laughs> Interesting. Exactly, but exactly. again, that all changed back in 1971 <laughs> when we became the U.S. Postal Service rather than the Post Office Department. So. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> so now the Postmaster General, you know, won't be <laughs> oh, okay. in line for the presidency. But we do have a brand new postmaster. General. Right, exactly. Like who? Is uh, his name is Pat Donahoe. Uh -huh. uh, he was the uh, deputy postmaster general and chief operating officer. He's been with the Postal Service for about 35 years, and he is now the skipper, if you will, of the ship. Okay. He'll take us through the next uh, you know, challenges right, with the right. Postal Service. Right. Well, you know, I was just talking to Jennifer regarding the challenges of, of uh, the U.S. Post Office. Um, Right now, for individuals like with me, I pay online now, right? Correct. And a lot of corporations are trying to either give their customers a bonus or like a little reward if you pay your bill on, online and or they penalize you if they charge you extra if they have to send you a statement. Mm -hmm. So it looks like this is the trend in the future, a lot of people, and, and, and that's what's happening with the newspapers today, right? The newspapers are Correct. trying to go from print to, to online. online. Mm -hmm. So terms. how does the post office uh, work with that challenge, which obviously is here to stay and will keep yes, on growing? absolutely. Um, I could address that. Yes, absolutely true. The what we're seeing is that there's a trend in, in trend in terms of the technology right. has been shifting toward from a lot of from the print side into the internet sp space area. Right. And a lot of people paying bills online, sending before paying bills, paying bills online, and versus sending a um, the mail piece in the mail. But also the mail piece is still a good source of direct marketing or direct mail campaign that can generate information for the advertiser a great deal. Right. And also you gotta think of the population of the people who would use mail versus the internet. Right. They tend to be the older population, they tend to be the you know, 60, 70 to 80 year olds, which are the more favor um, of the print media versus right. the internet in order, because they're used to it, they're comfortable with it. Right. And also um, that what they're comfortable, they'll continue to do so. Right. We embrace technology, absolutely. We talk about cross-media campaigns and internet advertising all the time okay. as we do sell. But uh, we encourage both internet advertising in conjunction with the print media for direct mail campaigns. Well, how, how does this cross-media cross campaign work? For the, the post office. Uh, for the cross media campaign, as a mailing solution specialist for USPS, mm -hmm. what we do is we encourage people to continue embrace technology along with the, the print aspect of it. Right. Because not one media is ideal for everyone. Right. Everybody has different ways of sending mail. S the older folks might like to deal with sending bills and statements. Right. Right. Other people might do things on, on the internet. Other people like to do it 
via the internet. Others like to do with print. So everybody has different style, d different manners of right. doing direct mail campaigns, and we want to make sure everyone, you know, that it's available to everyone to use it, whatever the comfort zone is that's appropriate for the audience. Right, right. Well, l l let's try. Um Okay, I guess some political campaigns, and you don't have to mention who spent the most. Of course, we know it's Meg Whitman, right, <laughs> in California, but oh, okay. the, the political campaigns is a major source of revenue it or is. business. It's very seasonal, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it is. It's seasonal. But, I mean, you have, like, millions and millions of pieces that hit people's mailboxes within a span of, what, three months or so? Three months or so, yes. That's exactly. The peak time of political mail campaign, which actually just recently finished um, from September to you know November right I um, mean there were several races going on in right. local yeah. mailer pieces in right. which I kind of was involved in in order to get it rolling the time frame for these political mail campaigns are very tight right in order to get it out but they also uh, they do they do very well for the postal service and also do very well for the advertisers Right. Or, the um, or the candidates mm -hmm. and the constituents or the nonprofit organization, yeah. whoever you know decide to do direct mail, that's because it works and it's effective. It is a very marketable medium and is um, trackable as to some extent as well. Right. So people do favor still direct mail in right. addition right. to other sorts of advertising, radio, TV, you know, all other areas. But they're more well, how about broad. coupons? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Coupons yeah. Are direct mail. Yeah. I, you know, usually I, I would just throw the coupons away, but yeah. now. Who doesn't yeah. like that 20% like off at Especially <laughs> the holiday season. Be cubed. You know? <laughs> exactly. The holiday season, the only holiday mailing time. You know, you want your your favorite, um, you know, um, your places to offer you 50% discount. Or exactly. Buy one, get one free. Exactly. Or whatever their freebie is, whatever promotion is. People want to take advantage of the offers. People like free things and offers mm -hmm. and specials, right. especially yeah. during the holiday season. Yeah, the um, actually small businesses, there's 23,000 small businesses in the state of California alone that take advantage of oh, our really? direct mail uh, advertising. 23,000? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, in okay. uh, California alone. And how else do like the small mom and pops let the neighborhood know that they've opened a store right. or something along those lines? You don't, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the big credit card companies that right. we, you know we see in the mail, but just small neighborhood restaurants, pizzerias, clothing stores, boutique stores. Right. It's a really simple way to get the word out there that your store has opened in this particular neighborhood. So it's very targeted. Direct right. mail is very very targeted, which it's a really huge advantage, and it's actually quite simple to do. Um, yeah. Once, mm -hmm. once you get in, once you do it once. And may I just add in, based on what you were saying, which mm -hmm. kind of uh, segue in is actually one product that we have is called Saturation Mail. Okay. And Saturation Mail, what it is, is actually a um, very cost effective, it is the most cost effective direct mail campaign that the postal office actually offers for primarily for the small businesses because small businesses make up the most of the revenue pretty right. much in the United States and whatnot, and we don't want to miss them. Right. So what is Saturation Mail does is basically um, it, it offers the highest postal discount up to 70% really? for first class and uh, first class mail and whatnot. And what you'll be able to do is can saturate a particular neighborhood, saturate a particular radius or area for that small business, that's at that pizza shop, mm -hmm. that's going to do a grand opening, right. and how to get the word out, how to get the brand recognition for the pizza house. Well, well, let's see, let's, do how do they do that? They have to go to a post office and say, look, I want to Well, first send of all, out. all this information is online oh, at okay, usps.com, okay. okay. on saturation mail. All right. Also, how it works primarily, very briefly, because I know we have limited uh, time segment, uh -huh. is that uh, you can easily get a list of uh, from let's say uh, a particular private company to right. lease the list. Let's say you want to saturate um, a two mile radius of your Pizza Hut right. place or Pizza XYZ, whatever it is about to open in one month from today. Right. You need to get a list. You need to saturate and you want to saturate in that particular area of the radius of your Pizza Place is located. And the mail piece um, pretty much will be dropped viewing walk sequence where the letter carrier will be walking so that they will keep the lowest possible discount or postal rate available right. for that advertiser or that small business to get their business 
information out and give them some recognition that right. oh it's opening for business or there's a coupon or there's a special going on and right whatnot. yeah so Jennifer mentioned USPS.com there's actually a very good section of USPS.com it's called business mail 101 uh -huh. which goes into a lot more detail and if anybody's interested in using uh, direct mail for advertising they go to USPS.com business mail and look up business mail 101 right. for more information on it right right well that's fascinating you know be, be, um, Obviously, you have to adapt and make changes in, in terms of your operations to generate more revenue. You're uh, going out to businesses uh, to promote direct mail. Um, but th there's also the savings aspect of it in terms mm -hmm. of your operations. It looks like these retirement uh, funds, mm -hmm. it's quite a big chunk. It, it's a huge chunk for us. And, and, and it's not only for the post office, but it looks like if you you know, reading the mail, uh, cities, counties, right. the state, everybody is looking at this yeah. huge retirement fund. How is yes. the post office looking at this? You have $5 billion a year? Yeah, well, we're, we're required by the law to pre-fund our employee retiree right. health care system right. um, over the next 10, 15 years at $5 right. billion dollars a year, something that's not done in other agencies, other agencies, federal agencies, right. uh, do what they call a pay-as-you-go system. Right. And they don't have to pre-fund. So, you know, it takes away from, basically it takes away from our bottom line. Right. And, um, you know, it's with declining re uh, mail volume, right. which means declining revenue. Um, you know, we were at $67 billion this year, where right. a couple of years ago we're up $177 billion. So our revenue is really coming down. So it's affecting the Postal Service's sure. bottom line. But there's other things that we're doing to compensate for the declining mail volume. We've done a lot of what we call route adjustments, where we adjust uh, you know, the, you know, the delivery points for right. the carriers and that sort of thing. And we've done a couple of other proposals, like six to five day delivery, okay. um, eliminating Saturday delivery uh, of mail, which will also uh, save quite a bit of money right, for the postal right. service over the long term. That's fascinating. Um, where I am, uh, there's always a line in the post office, and you know, I mean, everybody patronizes the post office. Obviously, I like going to the post office for certain things, for packages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, paying bills normally online, but for big businesses, big corporations, how how are they reacting to the changes? vis-a-vis -vis the internet, vis-a-vis -vis the technology and the right. mail. Right. Is there a lot of changes in that that well, you see? Well, as a uh, MSS and I talk to relatively large clients about right. uh, direct marketing initiatives and right. direct mail is part of direct marketing okay. campaigns. It's a sort of direct marketing but in the form of mail. And um, the businesses, the larger companies like you were saying actually encompass and to include the direct mail as long as their direct marketing efforts and combined everything into one. Right. So when I'm out there selling to the larger companies, I don't talk only about direct mail. I talk about all various direct marketing. What does that include? It could be right. search engine marketing, social media, huh, it could be texting, it could be um, very targeted internet search engine marketing or search right. engine optimization, all those yeah. areas of it. Yeah, the other side of that too is um, direct marketing can generate mail for us too. Um, right. You know, we, like, like uh, we said before, we, we really embrace the technology because uh, you know, people will, uh, the direct marketing piece will drive people online. Right. They go online, they order or something, they can't email a package and we're actually going after that package business. Right. So, there's never just one source of media campaign. It's always a combination of different type to uh -huh, make uh -huh. any marketing campaign work. Because like I said, it's not just on the print side or direct right. mail, but it would be you know information with direct mail piece to drive onto the website to respond to an offer. Right. Sometimes that's what we talk about to the larger companies and vice versa. So we need to embrace and encompass all different kind of marketing activities right. to make any marketing you know, effective. So that's what we kind of do these days. Well, you have this uh, sample showcase yes. project. What is that about? Absolutely. Okay. Here she is. She's going to be showing us all these bottles now. Okay. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs>
Okay, la di da. Wait, wait, there are two actually. She brought lunch with her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is the sample showcase. It is a new um, postal product recently introduced. <laughs> and I'll be very brief about what we have here. Basically, it's a cooperative marketing that we provide for our advertisers. Oh, okay. And yeah. inside is what it is is called a sample showcase box, okay? And it has all kinds of good, fun, enjoyable samples. <laughs> and it will be normally delivered to. Okay, just show us the samples because we're already out of time. <laughs> there you go. Okay, these are some fun samples. So, like the samples, uh, people love to try, taste, smell, eat, or whatever in sample, right? So, we have these kind of samples. This scents, is from the post office? Yeah, from the postal product. It's a postal product. Reese's, chocolate, candies. And, um, I told you she brought lunch. Beef jerky? Yeah, beef jerky, a vino bar. This is in a box from the post office? It comes in a box, yes. From the post office? It comes from the post office and delivered to the, your mailbox. Comes with your mailbox. And advertisers, wow. yeah, can have anywhere from six to 12 different type of samples in here. And <laughs> advertisers can keep their marketing very low. It costs only 30 to 50 cents per sample. Okay, how box. much is the box? Well, they pay per sample, so it's like 30 <laughs> to 50 cents. So that is all. It's very cost effective, it's very targetable, <laughs> okay. and measurable in results. And advertisers just love it because people love to try samples. And guess what? 94% of people who try the sample actually end up purchasing the product. How about that? From lunch steak to hand so lotion. So watch out. You may be getting a sample showcase. Okay, we're running out of time. We're running out of time, folks. Anyway, it's. Um, Thank you so much for, for coming to our show and have a Merry Christmas and patronize your post office. And again, this is Myrna Lim. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and good night. See you next time. Merry Christmas. And we're out. And we're done. And we're done. <laughs> All right.